Hello there and welcome to MailTrap. This is our SPF email authentication guide. I am Grigori from MailTrap. In this video, you'll get the full SPF record tutorial and learn more about its significance. We'll also share the steps on how to create an SPF record. And if you are facing those pesky SPF not working notifications, don't worry. I'll tell you three ways how to troubleshoot that problem. So let us go right in. What is the SPF meaning? The abbreviation stands for Sender Policy Framework and it is an email authentication text type method. Basically, it is a method that helps a mail server check that an email coming from a specific domain is submitted by an authorized IP address. The record itself contains data about trusted servers authorized by your domain. That data helps mailbox providers detect if an email is forged or not. But SPF is only one of the three widely adopted email authentication standards, and you should know more about each one. The standards are SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. As indicated, SPF determines if an email comes from an authorized IP address or domain. But what about DMARC and DKIM, you ask? DKIM uses keys for signature verification to inspect if an email was authorized by the owner of the domain. If you want to know more about DKIM, make sure to click the link up here in the video or read our blog post. Link available in the description below. And lastly, DMARC authentication standard extends what SPF and DKIM do in one go. Now, the important thing is that these authentication standards are necessary to protect you and your clients from email phishing, spoofing, and spamming, which we all want protection from. That is also why mailbox providers often require you to have SPF email authentication if you are sending out transactional and marketing emails. Why? Well, SMTP can't determine an email's origin or validate a domain, and that is precisely why you need SPF and other email authentication standards. However, that is hardly the only reason you need SPF. Now, let us talk about the most common SPF record myths. Full spoof protection. SPF works with the return path and the envelope from address of an email. So, it is invisible to users unlike, for example, the headers from address. Therefore, the SPF record does not protect the sender's visible address. Direct spam protection. Spam filtration systems use SPF to inspect emails, that is true, though it is just additional information to prove that your email is not spam. But let me explain. The filtration mechanism works based on probability. So relying alone on SPF to ensure that your email does not land in the spam folder is not sufficient. To remind you, you need DMARC and DKIM as well. Plus, you need to ensure that the email content does not trigger spam filtration and you need to make sure that you haven't gotten blacklisted. SPF authorizes the sender. The SPF record actually authorizes the sending server and not the individual sender's email address or account. That is, the SPF framework operates at the domain level. So, when a mailbox provider checks an SPF email record, it looks at the sender's IP address or domain, not just the email address. And now, let us see how that server IP or domain are authorized to send on your behalf. The whole process has only three steps. Now, this is where the SPF record gets created. The goal is to establish an authentication policy and define which hosts have the authority to send emails. The second step is the DNS lookup, during which the inbound server checks if the IP address or domain in the email is authorized in the SPF, and then the inbound server proceeds to verify the message. Finally, you get the authentication outcome. That is, the mail server accepts, flags, or rejects the email based on the guidelines in the SPF record. In real life, the process goes like this. Let us say that a server with this IP address, for example, sends an email from test at mailtrap.io. Using SPF, the inbound server sends a request to mailtrap.io domain to confirm that the address is indeed authorized to send emails. If not, then it will be sorted based on what is specified in the SPF record. At your domain configuration, you need to ensure that the SPF record is properly added to your DNS records. Why? SPF record missing from your DNS records may result in failed authentication. Now remember, when you are sending an email, the inbound email server looks for the SPF record to check if the domain or the IP address is indeed authorized for sending. If everything goes well, well, then your email reaches the recipient's inbox. With that, we have covered the SPF record basics, and it is time for us to go a bit deeper and look into the SPF record tags. What are the SPF record tags? 
Each SPF record contains tags that represent specific values to define if the domains and the IPs are authorized to send emails. But do keep in mind that only one SPF can be for the domain. So, if you are using several sending solutions like MailTrap or MailChimp, for example, then SPF records should mention both. When setting up a domain with MailTrap, we check all existing records and make sure we suggest an extended correct version of your SPF. If you are using MailTrap email API for sending transactional emails, we ask you to add an SPF record to your domain provider's DNS records. Then we add a reference to our own record, so when we update our SPF, your SPF gets updated automatically and there is no need to run any manual SPF updates. On that bombshell, let us discuss the SPF record tags. This tag shows the SPF version. MX has referenced the IP addresses listed in the MX record for the domain and authorized email servers by their MX records. This authorizes the mail server by the domain name. This mechanism is used to include SPF records of other domains within your domain's SPF. When you use the include mechanism, all the rules from that mechanism will be applied to your domain. For example, when you start using MailTrap, the include tag will look like this. That allows MailTrap to update the record without asking you to change anything. This mechanism allows you to specify the IP addresses and their range. This tag is like a catch-all default mechanism that applies to anything that was not caught by other mechanisms in the SPF tag. And it typically means that all else is not authorized. SPF qualifiers. You can find the SPF qualifiers in front of the old tag and there are four of them in total. Each qualifier has a specific purpose that defines the sending limitation for the host. Here is a quick overview of all SPF qualifiers and how to use them. The host is authorized to send. The host is not authorized or allowed to send and the message gets rejected. Also known as soft fail, this qualifier accepts and tags the message. The email gets accepted, but the host authorization is not specified. The important thing is to not use the plus qualifier in front of the old tag. That'll open the doors for all unauthorized senders, and we can already predict how many issues that'll cause. Using the qualifier for the old mechanism depends whether you can list all of your senders or not. If not, then it would make sense to use the tilde qualifier or the question mark, particularly if there are machines that can send emails, but you can't really list them all in the SPF. How to create an SPF record. At this point, you should have a much better understanding of how SPF works and what its syntax means. So, I think it is time to go deeper and see how to create an SPF record itself. The creation process is relatively straightforward and it only takes three steps. Also, if you are using some email sending services, they'll provide you with the SPF record. Step 1. First, you need to gather the IP addresses and domain names from which you plan to send. Put those in a note-taking tool or a code editor of your preference. Step 2. The first thing is the version tag. Type this. Then you need to insert the IP addresses and domains collected during the first step in the following format. Then, authorize third-party senders. The content of the SPF record for the include domain will be checked then. For example, it might look like this. Or it might look like that. It won't work literally you need to follow the documentation to make it work. But anyway, you can keep adding the include tag for all third-party email services you use. And lastly, you add the old mechanism to complete the record. To remind you, the old tag has qualifiers in front of it, as well as other mechanisms. If you are sure you have listed all of the services, use dash qualifier. If you're not sure, use tilde. Do note that when you use the tilde qualifier, the receiving server will likely accept emails from the senders that are not specified in your SPF record, but it will mark them as suspicious. When you use the dash qualifier, the receiving server may reject emails that are not specified in your SPF record. Typically, the SPF record looks like this. In case you are using MailTrap email API, we provide an already built SPF records for you to add to your DNS records. To locate your SPF on MailTrap, head over here then here, here, and finally here. Step 3. Next, you need to go to your domain provider and navigate to the DNS control panel. Here, I'll show you how to do it with GoDaddy. Go to my products page, scroll down to domains and click DNS next to the domain you'd like to use. 
Click add in the DNS records menu, choose text under type and type at under name. Lastly, copy and paste the mechanisms and tags from the text file you just created into the value box. Then click add the record button to confirm the action. How to validate your record. After you've created the SPF record, you can use online services such as SPF Record Check and SPF Syntax Validator to see if you got the right SPF. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll use Mimecast SPF Record Checker. But of course, freely use any other tool if it works better for you. So, navigate to this site, type your domain name and click Validate DNS. Don't forget to check the box in the recapture box and you'll see the SPF record. Should there be any problem, the tool will let you know how to fix your SPF. Troubleshooting SPF If the system detects some errors, it is important to fix them right away to not compromise your email reputation. Let us go a bit deeper into this and see the most common SPF validation mistakes and see how we can troubleshoot them together. DNS lookup limit There are only 10 DNS queries and if you nest too many tags into your record, it is possible to reach the DNS lookup limit. This applies to any tag besides the IPs, and some tags such as include and redirect may require more than one DNS lookup. So, it is best to limit the DNS lookup to 10. But in case you need more ways to troubleshoot the breaking of 10 DNS lookup limit, check out our detailed, and I do like this word, demarking guide. The link is available in the description below with the rest of the links. SPF PAM error. This error is commonly caused by SPF syntax problems or typos. It is relatively simple to correct, just run your SPF through an SPF validator tool and it should show you exactly where the syntax or the typo occurred. Multiple SPF records. If you're using large email providers like Microsoft Exchange or Gmail, the issue with the duplicated SPF records should be corrected automatically. Smaller email providers do not usually offer such intelligent features, so you're likely going to have to handle this all by yourself, I'm afraid. The best solution is to merge both of your DNS text entries into a consolidated version. Do find more information on how to deal with this issue in our SPF do's and don'ts, which link is also available in the description below. And that is all. You now have a much better understanding how SPF record works, what its common myths, what is the creation process of SPF, and how to set up and troubleshoot various technical issues. But again to remind you, it is not the only email authentication that helps your emails reach the right destination. Do watch our DKM video to see how it also helps authorize your emails. Thank you for watching our SPF email authentication guide. This video is brought to you by MailTrap, an end-to-end -end solution to test, send, and control your emails in one place. If you found this video useful, make sure to like and subscribe for more email delivery content, and see you soon in our next one.